The woman's faith healed her. Her faith has saved her. Be reverent now. Would you come, sir? Do you believe with all your heart? Do you believe? We are both in his presence, the presence of the Almighty, to whom we will give an account for at the day of the judgment when we stand. It's becoming dark around you, my brother. You are being taken to a place. It's a, I see a man at the hospital. It's a surgery. You, uh, uh, cancer. And the doctors shut their heads and sewed you up. There's nothing can be done as far as doctors concerned. They sewed you up and left it that way. Jesus Christ is sure to make you well. Do you believe it? I do. Almighty God, the author of life, the giver of every gift, spare the life of this dying man. For your glory, Lord, may he be granted. I condemn the cancer and ask that while I have my hands upon him under the anointing of the Spirit, that you will condemn the demon of cancer. Satan, you've hid from the doctor. You can't hide from God. Move from the man. Come out of him in Jesus Christ's name. So happy to everyone just as reverent as you can be for a few moments. Just have faith. Believe with all your heart. If you can believe with all your heart, Jesus Christ can work with you. And he will be with you. Kidney trouble, sister. Stand up on your feet. Yes, you with the glasses on right here. You're healed now. You prayed before you come here for this to happen. Is that right? Wave your hands. I seen you when you were praying in the vision. You're healed now. You can go on. God bless you. By the way, sister, being the Holy Spirit's upon you, there's a lady sitting there next to you. Your heart was thrilled there. She has high blood pressure, that the white lady sitting next to you. Stand up on your feet there, lady, and next to her there with a the high blood pressure and say for the Lord Jesus to make you well, too. God bless you now. Stand up and let the lady lay your hands on each other there. That's right. Oh, God, be merciful. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. I've seen the little lady sitting behind her with glasses on, all thrilled. Yes, you're suffering too, aren't you, lady? It's head trouble. Stand up. Jesus Christ heals you. Go home now and be made well. God be with you. Have faith in God. He's over the audience now. That colored lady sitting way back in the back there with that growth. Sitting way back, right on the back end of the seats back there. Raise up, lady. Jesus Christ makes you well. God bless you. You can go home. you got a little green something over your shoulder. Your faith has healed you now. Go home. Be made well through Jesus Christ's name. Praise be to the Lord Jesus. His magnificent power, his glory. How do you do, lady? You and I are strangers to each other, I suppose. I've never seen you in my life. Perhaps you've never seen me. But we're here as, as brother and sister, staying at the platform. Do you believe on the Lord Jesus that God raised him up from the dead? Do you believe that he has sent it on high and give gifts unto man? Do you believe me to be his servant? Humbly I say it, I'm not worthy to be. But he, somebody has to be. Is that right? If God will let me know, What's your trouble? You're suffering with uh, an arthritis. 
Isn't that right? There's something strange about you. There's something moving around you. Everyone, ever, the woman's fading from me. Oh, it's a, it's a boy. You've got a son that's got paralysis. He isn't here. But your heart's bleeding for him. You were thinking of him when you walked up. I hear him call her a dog. Your name is Decker. Your first name is Ida. You live at uh, 1524 and a half Street. God bless you. Go home. You're in God bless you. you rejoice and lay your hands on your son. How do you do? Do you believe with all your heart? You believe you're in his presence? You're a stranger in this city. You come from the east coming this way, across the desert. You come from New Mexico, Gallup, New Mexico. You had female trouble when you come over here. You're going back without it. Your face is healed. Here. You believe with all your heart? Amen. My sister, diabetes is a horrible thing, isn't it? But Jesus Christ can heal it. Do you believe that? Come near. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life and giver of every gift. Let this, our sister, now by faith go to Calvary for a blood transfusion. By faith may the rich blood of Jesus Christ atone for this sickness now. As I lay my hands upon her, may she be healed. Through Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. Go believing with all your heart, and you can receive, won't you? All right. Look this way, young lady. I've seen you slipping up through the aisle there a while ago. What if I told you that your kidney trouble and back trouble was healed when he came up on the platform there? Would you believe me? And go ahead, you are. I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it. All right. The woman has a trumpet in her ear. Will you bow your head just a moment? All right, dear Lord, Savior, I pray for divine mercy for our sister. Satan has did this evil, and I ask now that you move it for her. May the demon that's bound the woman come out from her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, while the audience keeps their head bowed a minute. Do you hear me now, ladies? Come on up
have mercy on me. Shall we pray? Our kind Heavenly Father, great Jehovah God, we thank thee for the Lord Jesus Christ, your lovely Son, who came to us when we were alienated from God in the commonwealth of God, Gentiles, cut off without mercy. And Jesus died in our stead, reconciling us back to our Creator, and we're grateful for him tonight. And now it does not yet appear what we'll be in the final end, but we know we'll have a body like his, for we shall see him as he is. We'll be free from sickness, from affliction, from heartache, from sorrow, from sin, will be no more. Lord Jesus, help us, we pray, that you will bless us in our feeble efforts as we're trying to shed forth the manifestation of our resurrection to the people of this day. Bless every church that's here. Bless everyone that's cooperating. Bless the people who own this Shriner Temple. We're very grateful for them. They let us have it to worship you. And I pray, God, that every custodian and every man and every Shriner at the end of life's journey will be saved. Grant it, Father. May they be filled with your spirit. I pray that you'll grant this. They've been so kind to us. Let us have their places throughout the world where we travel. And now we ask that the Lord Jesus, thy beloved child, will come in our midst tonight in his resurrection power and will manifest his love to his children. For we ask it in his name. Amen. There has never been adequate time for a, a, a service where the people are in one accord like they are here tonight, and every night they've been, and the Holy Spirit's moving. Many of the speakers perhaps has already spoken. Brother Huckstra, my long bosom friend, he's been coming to get me at night from my hotel room and bringing me to the place. I didn't know how to find my way around, and tonight he was telling me out there, he said, uh, They'd showed some pictures and had taken up a missionary offering for me for my overseas work. It is to my humble belief that the Lord Jesus is soon coming. I, I just don't see any other alternative for this world than for the coming of the Lord Jesus to be next. And I am so thrilled to know, and I am believing with all my heart, as the other night I quoted again, I guess... Brother Oregon Bride is here somewhere tonight. The one that has the picture, or it may be the picture you just showed, of the returning of the Jews to Palestine. What a remarkable incident it is now. How the prophets said that they would be there, and how they would return, and how the desert would blossom as a rose. And it's striking to know that we're living in that day, and that Jewish flag of flying again for the first time for 2,500 years. And I want to show you something a little remarkable that you'd see why my heart burns for it. The very day that Israel was declared a nation again for the first time for 2,500 years, that same night the angel of the Lord sent me out to pray for the sick. The very same time, 86, 1946. The Lord Jesus did that. And now in Africa, I asked them if they'd been reading the Bible, the missionaries give them. And they seen what the Lord Jesus did then, and what he did then, he'll do now, I said. He has risen from the dead. Amen. He's no more dead. He is alive forevermore. And he is here in every meeting. And where many, many tens of thousands of people had gathered, and when I asked them, I said, now what did our Lord Jesus do when he was here on earth? The thing he did, he never claimed to be a great person. He said he could do nothing within himself. Just what the Father showed him to do, that's what he done. St. John 5.19. He passed through the pool of Bethesda where many crippled and afflicted people were lying. Many of them helpless. Perhaps thousands lay in there, lame, halt, blind, and withered. He passed by them without healing them. We sometimes wonder how with full of love and compassion he could do that. But we misinterpret what love and compassion is. He walked to a man laying on a little pallet and said, Will thou be made whole? He said, no one can help me in the water. He could walk, but said, while I'm coming, someone steps down before me. He said, take up thy bed and go into thy house. And the man was made whole. Walked away and left that multitude. We wonder at that sometimes if you don't have a spiritual understanding. 
Jesus said to the Jews, the very same chapter, the 19th verse, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. The Father worketh, and the Son worketh hitherto. No prophet, no time, any man ever possessed the power to do it within himself, just as God will reveal it. Jesus said there was many lepers in the days of Naaman, but only one was sent to him. Just one leper was healed in all the days of Elijah, one leper, because God sent him there. Elijah knew on Mount Carmel when he laid the sacrifices, he said, I did all of this at your will, at your word, taking God at his word. I believe tonight, and I trust now, I trust that this auditorium of people will come right on down and help finish out the meeting with us in prayer and stand by us. If there's some that cannot, maybe some of them out of town and have to go home, if you are, the next few weeks be praying for me. When the winds are howling and things are going contrary, I remember there's a group in Los Angeles praying for me. Amen. I believe that. Amen. And in the India first, we're just like in Africa, where witch doctors and everything else, as soon as they see the first sign of supernatural, they challenge it. And I have never seen a time when our Lord Jesus triumphed, moved over, went out in glory fighting. I've never seen a time but what there was a great sign and miracle followed. And I pray that you'll be praying for me, for I need your prayers. I'm just a man, just a human being, your brother in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I need your prayers very much, and I'll be depending on you, friend. I would like to get, if possible, I don't know what it'll be when I get into Jerusalem. I have to go to Trench Jordan first, of course, before I can get into Jerusalem. Oh, how my heart burns to stand, seeing every prophecy, as far as I know, fulfilled except one thing a spiritual awakening among the Jews. Amen. When the Jews receive the Holy Ghost again and the kingdom of God comes upon them, the Gentile days will be finished. And I have heard, I do not know, I haven't been there. Mr. Louis Petrus, our brother in Stockholm, Sweden, the big Philadelphia church sent around a million Bibles down there, written in Yiddish. Those Jews coming in reading the Bible, they said, If this be the Messiah, let us see him do the sign of a prophet. We'll believe it. That's the same thing we used in Africa. How happy I would be to see them make that same challenge. And they believe the prophets. They believe the supernatural. The Jews seek signs. The Greeks' wisdom, said Paul. The Jews still seek signs. And our Heavenly Father is a sign, miracle-working God. They're looking for him. We've had theology. They've taught it through the countries until they're just sick and tired of the tracks they're passing. But they want to see the word made manifest. Then they'll believe it. Jesus said the same thing. I'm afraid, teachers. That's where we made a mistake. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel, and these signs shall follow them and believe in all the world. I believe that's where we've left off. We tried to bypass it with our theology around the very fountain that gives life to the world, the resurrected Jesus Christ. If he is risen from the dead, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, can do the very same things tonight, right here in this audience, that he did when he was here. What would he do? He would stand here saying he wouldn't dress any different from any other man. He would look like other man. He walked among man, peasant, poor, come by the way of a stable, went out through capital punishment, only had one garment, as far as we know of in the scripture, and walked throughout without seeing. It was given to him. No place to lay his head. He was poor. He talked like the poor people talk. He didn't have, he wasn't eloquent in his speech, perhaps. But he spake like a man never spake before, for he had authority. He, God was with him. He was God manifested in the flesh. Jehovah unveiled in human flesh. I love him tonight with all my heart. Amen. My heart bleeds for him. And to think, he's waiting for us to take this gospel to all the world. Then he said, I will return. He's sitting on his father's throne tonight waiting to return to his own throne, his, uh, David's throne, to rule and reign through the millennium. Hallelujah. He's longing to return, and he's depending on the church. How short we have fallen. God help us and forgive us, is my prayer. In the scripture I just was reading, was of a blind man. It seems that Jericho, the poor fellow, and rags shivering I've heard many dramatized pictures of this scene. 
But just to speak on his word for a moment, to see how that the poor fellow, many lepers, blind, beggars in that day, his chances was very small of ever getting a coin now and then. Perhaps he just eat every once in a while. His clothes was ragged. Someone would come by the morning if he's wealthy enough to give a coin. The first one they met, that settled it through the day. So being so many, and Jericho was a wicked city, always has been a cursed city since Joshua took it for Israel. Cursed the man that would build a wall. And him standing in that condition, perhaps getting late in the fall, getting cold, and he shivered to the side of the wall. Inside they were carrying on, making noises. And he sat close to the road, perhaps within a few hundred feet of the road that led from Jerusalem to Jericho. A blind man sitting by the wall, or the theology of the priests of that day had said the days of miracles were past. Right down that same road, Joshua, the great conqueror for Israel, brought the children of Israel, shouted, and the walls of Jericho fell. It was on that same road, not many years before that, that Elijah and Elisha walked arm in arm and crossed Jordan. And Elisha returned with a double portion of the Spirit. I can imagine the blind man saying, if I'd only lived in the day when the great prince Joshua came by, I would have asked for a blessing. If I'd only lived when the prophet came by, I would have asked those anointed ones if they would have helped me. Little did he know, just around the corner was the prince of all, the Son of God. As he comes through the gate, the people, priests, making fun of him, crowd, wailing him, crying after him. Some of them loved him, some hated him. I can hear a noise. I can imagine the poor blind beggar said, what's the noise about? You know, usually where Jesus is, there was always a little noise, a little upsetting. Why? Life comes in. Right. Life brings noise. If a baby's born and it doesn't cry, it's dead. Right. What's the matter with the church tonight? We need some more weeping, breaking up. In our services, when Israel travails, children was born. When the church travails, children will be born. And I can see the prophets, or the prince of the prophets, the king of prophets, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he came out of the gate, moving along, his face set towards Calvary, the burdens of the world laid upon his blessed shoulders. The Bible said there was no beauty we should design, perhaps a frail little fella, as he walked out of the gate. His head threw back, his eyes set towards the heaven as he marched forward to do the will of God. People making fun of him. We just have a shadow of it for what he went through. Maybe throwing things at him, as it would be today, rotten tomatoes and so forth, scarring and making fun of him. And a little beggar standing by the side of the gate said, Who passes by? One said, Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry, and his face stopped the Lord Jesus. He turned around and said, what would you and I do so that I might receive my sight? Now, he never asked me how pretty heaven would be. He didn't want to ask him, well, some of the theology that he was teaching. He had something in his heart he wanted, my sight. He said that I might receive my sight. Jesus said, thy faith has saved thee. I can imagine the crowd going on, Jesus going on towards Jerusalem to be sacrificed. But the faith of that beggar stopped him. All at once I can see him in. As he stands, the crowd going on down the road, he begins to look. He said, he said I could, I would be able to see, I believe him. And after a while, he begins to see his hands, and here he comes down the road rejoicing and screaming that he was able to see. He followed Jesus because Jesus had done something for him. I told a little story not long ago. I read it. May I pass it to you, a blind Bartimaeus. They said he was been blind practically all his life. The little story it may be fiction. It'll do for this time and said that he used to go down to the gates and he had two turtle doves that done little enchantments tumbling over each other to attract the attention of the tourists, something a little different, so he could get a coin, a few more coins. So he had a child, and the child got sick one night. He went out and prayed, and he said, God, if you'll let my baby live, I promise you tomorrow I'll sacrifice this doves for you. So the next day, the baby was well. He'd taken the doves and sacrificed them, as he promised Jehovah to do it. Not long after that, something else happened. And what it was, his wife took sick. The doctors could do her no good. He said, Lord, if you'll just help my wife and let her get well, I'll sacrifice my lamb. Now today, a blind man's led by a dog. In them days, they were led by a lamb.
And so the next morning, his wife as well. He goes up to the temple to sacrifice the lamb. The great high priest kept us at that time. That doctor, where goest thou, Brian Bartinius? He said, O oh, high priest, I go to the temple to sacrifice my lamb. I told the Lord last night, if he let my wife live, I would give him this lamb. He said, O oh, high priest, you, uh, Brian Martinez, you can't sacrifice that lamb. He said, I'll give you some money, and you go buy your lamb at the stall. He said, high priest, I never promised God a lamb. I promised him this lamb. He said, but Brian Bardinius, you cannot sacrifice that lamb. That lamb is your eyes. He said, oh, high priest, I have made a promise to God, and God will provide a lamb for Brian Bardinius' eyes. A few months later, but the walls of Jericho, there was a lamb provided for Brian Bardinius' eyes. Amen. That same lamb is provided tonight for every person in here in sin, for every backslider, Forever, forever sick person. And may he come in his resurrected power as he would stand. And may he take this church into his charge tonight. May he help me, his poor, unworthy servant. May he help me tonight and anoint me that before my people that I might have some way to do something in this audience tonight by his power that if he'll let me as I submit myself to him that you might leave this tabernacle tonight or this place saying like those who came from Emmaus. He walked with them all day long. They didn't recognize him. Many Christians today walk with him but don't recognize him. Don't recognize who's doing these little things for you. Then when he was in there, he did something that's a little different from other people, and they recognized it was him. Their eyes were open. May the God of heaven open our eyes tonight to something that we'll say when we leave here, did not our hearts burn within us. Shall we pray to him? Oh, Lord Jesus, our lovely Savior, the only hope of the world is in thee. In thee we trust. As the poet has written, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Not upon our churches, Lord. Not upon our membership. But upon you, Lord. We confess our sins. We are guilty. And we have no way of standing. You stood in our place, and we love you. And our hearts burn within us for you. And I long to see the day, Lord, if I can only kneel humbly at your feet. If you'll just let us pat your feet, bathe it with our tears of gratitude. And now, to him that's raised from the dead and alive forevermore, come into our midst, not only into our midst, but into our hearts. And may you show your power tonight of your resurrection. As you did in the days gone by, may it be so this night. We pray for this for no other purpose but for the glory of God, that the name of Jesus Christ might grow and be magnified in this great, lovely city called Los Angeles. For we ask it in the name of your beloved child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. be merciful to us all. I wonder if they give out some prayer cards. What? J, 1 to 50. J, all right. Let's begin with 1. Who has J number 1 in the prayer card? 2, 3, on up to about four, 20 or 25. Stand first, if you will. If you ushers help the people, those who are blind or crippled and got those cards, we'll call a little later again. And... While they're coming, I'd like to have your attention, please. I want you to be very reverent. The service is not an arena now. It's a house of worship. And may the angels of God descend from heaven and take their places at every bench tonight, at every place, and abundantly bless every person here that's in divine presence. And I pray that if there is someone in here now who is a sinner and has not yet accepted our dear loving Savior, the Lord Jesus, I pray that you will now in your heart accept him as your personal Savior. May I say this to you while they're coming? There is nothing more God can do for you. He gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Son of God has died that you might be 
saved from sin, that you might be healed from sickness. And every Christian tonight has, as it were, a bank book with Jesus' name signed at the bottom of every check. Are you afraid to cash in on your dividends tonight? He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that I'll do. Ask whatever you desire. Believe you receive it, you shall have it. St. Mark 11, 24. Maybe some of you here doesn't believe in divine healing. If you don't, I don't see how you could believe on the Lord Jesus without believing that. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace upon him with his stripes we were healed. And divine healing is an attribute of his death. Salvation is an attribute of his death. And everything that he died for, every Christian tonight has it freely by accepting it. First, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. You preach the word. That's the initial way. But think of our lovely Father. If his children couldn't believe his words, then he gives gifts into the church. Is that true? Some of them are different gifts. Some of them are teachers, apostles, teachers, evangelists, prophets, gifts of healing, miracles, speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues. All those nine spiritual gifts goes in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the body of believers. Do you believe that tonight, Christians? If you do, would you raise your hand as a sign to the Lord Jesus that you are a believer? May he grant to you the desire of your heart. I'm sure I'll be happy to pray for you. Now I want to ask you something, and to you clergymen also. If Jesus has risen from the dead, as we know he has, did the scripture teach in Hebrews 13, 8 that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Well, what he did then, he'd do now. Is that right? What he did. Now, he didn't claim to have power to heal, did he? He said, I can do nothing except the Father shows me first. Is that right? First, the Father shows me that I do. Do you believe that scripture is inspired? St. John 5, 19. Look at the rest of scripture and see if it dovetails with it. Look at the blind man when he comes begging to him. He walked on down the street. They came into the room. He touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. The woman touched his garment, went back out in the crowd, and stood out there. Jesus knew something had happened. He was a seer. Not only a seer, but he was the king of the seers. He looked out into the audience. He found the woman that had the faith. He said, thy faith has saved thee. He knew the name of Simon. He said, your name is Simon, but you shall be called Peter hereafter. The things that he did in his day, he talked to the woman at the well. Instead of going on down to Jericho, he went up to Samaria, sent the disciples away. I wonder why. When the woman came out to draw water, we think, here she was a prostitute. I know not. God does. Whatever she was, Jesus, being a Jew, asked her a Samaritan to give a drink of water. It was a racial separation, something like today, between the colored and white. She said it's not customary for Jews to ask Samaritans such. In a very polite, dignified way, he said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. The conversation went on. After a bit, to my opinion, he was contacting her spirit. Jesus did not work through mental telepathy, as we call it today, but he read the people's minds. Do you believe that? The scripture said he did. He perceived their thoughts. Is that right? Or what's perceiving a thought? Perceiving what you're thinking of. Not these psychic readers out here. That's the devil. That's the devil. Any fortune tellers are psychic. But did you know the devil impersonates everything that God has? He has his churches. He teaches the gospel in his way. As Jambus and Jambus stood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Look at Jambus and Jambus. Someone who might think that divine healing was of the devil. The devil cannot, never did, and never will be able to heal anybody. Jesus Christ said so. He said, if Satan can cast out Satan, then his kingdom's divided. What was the sign between the, the magicians and, and the real true prophet Moses and Aaron? The magician could almost do everything that Moses did. But the magician could bring the diseases, but he couldn't take them away. He couldn't heal. <laughs> they broke out and boiled themselves, see, and they couldn't heal. But God can heal. 
Satan can impersonate, but he can't heal. I'm just your brother, a man. Have they got is there all your full amount there, Billy Paul? I don't want you to talk. I just want to talk to you. And I want that with the, the prayer line and whatever it is in the audience. Because it's a vision, and when the vision breaks, when you speak, it brings it back. And sometimes I don't get the main thing of what the Holy Spirit says and does. It's going into another world. To the scientists, another dimension. Here stands a young man before me. I have never seen him in all my life. We're total strangers. He may be standing here with cancer. He might be standing here with tumor. He might, I don't know what's wrong with the boy. God does. God can reveal it. Do you believe that? May he grant it is my prayer. A young man, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, we stand. We may never meet again in this life. Now I stand to tell you that I'm just your brother. But Jesus is the Savior of the world. You believe that, or you're a Christian. And Jesus Christ is here, and I mean when you not. And if you're in need, and Jesus Christ can reveal to me what your need is, would you believe that I have told the truth that he is the resurrected Son of God, and will accept him saying, will you do that? The Lord bless you. I want you to look on me. Not just like Peter and John passed through a gate called Beautiful. Said, silver and gold have I known. See? Said, look on us. The prophet Elijah said to Jehoshaphat, to Jerome, and then it came down in the wilderness. Said, if it was, and I respected the presence of Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even look at you. But bring me a minstrel. He went into the room, the minstrel played. The hand of the Lord came on the prophet. You're not from this city, young man. You're from out of the city. You've come from an eastern town, or city, and that city is in Ohio. It's Hamilton, Ohio. You're here not for sickness. You're here seeking God, and you've come to this platform to receive, for me to lay hands on you, that you might receive gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your name's Gordon Thomas. Over. That's it. Come here. You can receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I bless this my brother, and may he return and receive that what he's asked for. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. Hallelujah. Where are you, young man? The Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, bless you. Brother, would you bring the lady? Good evening, sister. I perceive that you are a Christian. Yes. As soon as we stand here, your spirit feels welcome. Do you believe that's the same spirit that when Jesus first came into his ministry? And he said, there's a man by the name of Woo! Philip got converted. And he went and found Nathaniel. And he said, come see who we have found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And the fine Israelite said, could any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, come see. And when he came into the line, perhaps like you are standing now, he said to him, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guy. In other words, a Christian believer would be now the same sentence. He said, when did you know me, rabbi, or reverend, teacher, whatever you wish to call it? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, Thou art the Son of God. He's still the Son of God, isn't he? You're here to see me tonight. If he was here, you're trying to find him through me as a vessel. If he was in the city, you would go to him. But he isn't here. He's not here in a body form, but he's here in the spirit. A little while and the world will see me no more. But he said, Yet you shall see me. For I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Manifesting the same sign. Now, the world doesn't believe this. But ye believe it, the Christian. You're nervous, sister, for one thing. And another thing, 
you have a lung trouble. And that lung trouble is you're hemorrhaging out of the right lung. That is true. I'll wait. Come here. Merciful Father, as I stand with my hands laid upon the place that Satan has come to in the form of medical terms called TB, but thou can remove him, Father. Doctors may fail, but thou cannot fail. You can hide from the doctor, Satan, but you can't hide from God. You're exposed. Come out of the woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave her. May she be well. Bless and on you, sister. Go on your way in peace now and rejoice and give Jesus Christ praise and glory. Is my prayer. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Would you come near, lady? You believe with all your heart now? I want to talk to you just in order to catch your... to see what the Lord would say. And I believe that he will tell me something that would help your faith. The first thing, you are suffering with a chest trouble. It's in your chest. And you are here interested in someone else. It's, a, it's your grandson. He has an ear trouble. He is not with you. But you're packing a handkerchief. And the handkerchief has got a, a little burst printed on it. And it came in an envelope addressed to you. Take it to him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not dead. He lives forevermore. He is to make intercessions to the Father of the Almighty to give blessings and praise to those who love him and who will believe him. Sir, sitting out there on the end of the road, you're concerned about your eyes, aren't you? You're just about to go blind. Stand up on your feet, standing right there. Jesus Christ makes you whole, sir. Don't fear. Your sight's all right. Lay your hand on that woman next to you. She's brought with spinal trouble. Raise up, lady, and be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Your spinal trouble has left you. Your faith in the Son of God has made you whole. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart. The Holy Spirit still hangs in a corner. The angel of God, the light of all the children of Israel that you see on the picture, stands right there and looks to me. You can see it now. That's what's moving there. It's hanging over a lady. She's sitting here on the front. She's got low blood pressure. Your faith has healed you, lady. Raise up to your feet. There was a low blood pressure right there, there. Christ has made you well. Amen. Your faith in God has hit it. Young man. You sitting next to her, your body with gland trouble. You want the Lord Jesus to heal you, don't you? Stand up on your feet and accept your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, author of life, giver of every good gift, send our blessings upon our children and make them well to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. God bless you. Go home now to each of you. And may the Lord grant to you the desire of your heart. Amen. Little lady, sitting there with the glasses on, the side of that man, you're suffering with a nervous trouble. You were sitting right in there looking at me. Stand up just a minute. Right here. Your faith has healed you. Go home now and be well. God bless you. All right. Come, lady. Do you believe me to be his servant with all your heart? You know, I'm just your brother in Christ Jesus. I'm just a man, but you're conscious you're standing in his presence. You know it's more than a man standing here. Your brother wouldn't put that feeling on you. That the people might know that you're truly, you have a feeling is on you now that you've never felt before. If that's right, raise up your hand to the audience. You're standing in his presence, not mine, his. Now, this is a typical, like Jesus of Nazareth when he was here, to the woman of Samaria. You're a colored woman, me a white man. Jesus let him know then that there was no difference between the people. He thinks the same thing today. 
There's no difference. Christ died for you as he died for me. You're my sister. I'm your brother in Christ Jesus. You've been up for an operation. That operation was a tumor. You refused to have it taken out because you believe God. God bless you. I bless this, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the tumor die at this time. Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus, come out from the woman. Oh, sister, God be with you. Have faith in God. Come, young man. You believe me to be his servant. You're aware that something's going on. That's his presence. Not I. By grace that he lets me be anointed. So that I can help you. I can help you if you believe me. It's turning dark around you, sir. You're in a dying condition. You got cancer. And the cancer is in a prostate gland. There's another thing. I see you walking through the house moving your neck. You got a popping in your neck goes on. That's a phobia. Oh, God. In Jesus Christ's name, I condemn death around my brother and ask that life take its place. Come out of the man, Satan, in Jesus Christ's name, leave him. Blessings on you, my brother. The Holy Spirit that's here to anoint me, to know your condition, there's no secret but what God would know. With hands laid upon you by him who said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Go believing and you'll live. God bless you. Amen. Just a moment. Stop a man just a minute. Look this way, sir, again. There was a spirit went over the audience at that time. Did you have something wrong with your neck? No. It's you sitting right there. You have neck trouble too, don't you? Stand up to your feet. It's your neck trouble. You, you done it by, you was in an accident that hurt your neck. It's gone from you, sister. I seen it leave a woman, and I know that was a man. You're both healed now. God bless you. Go on, you're able to rejoice. Your face has saved you. Come on, young man. Come on, young man. Come on, young man. How do you do, sister? Death is near you by cancer. You're aware of that? What is cancer to the Lord Jesus Christ? who spoke the world into existence. Yeah. By his word, he framed the world. All things was made by him. His blood is now sufficient to condemn this evil one. You've been worrying. Before you come to this meeting, you prayed in a room and asked if you could receive a prayer card by God that you'd accept your healing. That's right. You've got it. Come now, I'm believing when I said cancer to the woman, you had a strange feeling, didn't you? The symptoms of the same thing, cancer, left you. Just go on your road rejoicing. God bless you. Have faith in God. What's our trouble to our Lord Jesus? He can make you well right now. Do you believe that? Oh, God, creator of heavens and earth, author of life, send thy blessings upon this poor woman. If you don't, Lord, she'll have to go. But I ask blessing. It's standing here in this weakened condition. I condemn this demon that's desirous to take her life in premature grave. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave the woman. Don't see her, sister. She's so being happy. Rejoicing. But the lady's trouble and also heart trouble. You believe that you can accept him now as your healer? Left you now, sister. He who lets me know it was there lets me know it's gone. So go rejoice and be happy. I am not reading your mind. Don't think that. I am not. It is not mental apathy. It's the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Here's a patient standing here now. The best I want to know it's a man. Come here, sir. Lay your hand on my shoulder. You believe me to be his prophet, his servant. You do. If I can look over this way, not reading your mind, not looking at that, so that the people would be satisfied with this. 
If you believe that I've told you the truth, and the truth is in the Bible that Jesus is the Son of God, and he sent me just this servant to help bring the church of the living God together in unity. Do you believe that, sir? If I will tell you what's wrong with you right now, with your hands on my shoulder, will you raise your hand and accept your healing? May the Lord grant it. Now you can go eat your supper. Your stomach trouble left you. <laughs> Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Lay your hand over all mine, sister. You believe me to be his servant? You do. You believe the Lord Jesus can tell me by vision out here as I look at this audience? What's wrong? And if he will, will you accept your healing? You will. I see you trying to get off of a curb of the street. I see you trying to get in somewhere. It's a door. Come high. You've got arthritis. Now raise up your hands. Stomp your feet up and down on the floor. It's gone from you now. You can go Amen. Believe now with all your heart. There you stand. It's a lady saying there's got gallbladder trouble. Sitting around the end of the row there. Right here, this row here running out. Right out. About, about seven or eight or ten people right out there. Stand up on your feet, lady. Right out here. Jesus Christ makes you whole. You are healed at the same time, sister. Go on your road rejoicing, thanking God for his goodness. And there is a smell. The only thing, sir... You think the, you cross bridges before you get to them, taking other things up on your heart, and you're always planning something that never happens. It's only mentally nervous, the mental nervousness. That is right. You've been that way for years. But Jesus Christ is sure to take it off of you. It's a dark shadow that follows you all the time. You're conscious of something near you like that at all times. You believe that God's going to take it from you now. Yes, sir. Satan, leave this man. Come out of him in the name of Jesus Christ. Go out of him. I adjure thee by the living God that you torment him no more. Raise up your hands, sir. You're free for the first time since you was a child. Oh, Lord. Go on your Lord. Have faith in God. Do you believe him right now? Over this audience, this seems like a milky haze is hanging here. I'm not a fanatic. I'm a Christian. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ. And right now, he's here to make every person well. Will you believe me as this prophet? Can you believe that I tell you the truth? I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, that now that my strength is moving and my vision is becoming one blur, in this audience right now, it looks like drops are moving over this audience at this time. But the Holy Spirit, he is here right now to heal every person. In the audience here, these are the wheelchairs, wherever you are, the blind man, whoever you are, the lady sitting there with the female trouble, it's finished. That man that was arthritis, get up on your feet, sir. God has made you whole. Stand up the whole group of you just at this time. Jesus Christ is sure to heal you. Almighty and omnipotent God, the author of life, the giver of every good gift, let it be known that I send the Holy Spirit in the great Russian mighty wind that will sweep through this building and heal every person. Satan, I condemn thee by the atoning blood of the Son of God.